The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company. Hi, I'm Reese Davis. ESPN is proud to present this commercial-free presentation of Sports Figures, where science and math meet sports. Today, Toronto Raptors all-star Vince Carter gets the hang of hang time with our Jeff Caldwell. Up, 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 up. Down. Down, 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 down. Yeah. Sports figures, put your brain in the game. Basketball players like Vince Carter get some pretty amazing air, right? It almost seems like they can hang in the air as long as they want, like they're floating. How long do you think Vince Carter is in the air when he goes to dunk? Uh, he's probably up there for about four, four and a half seconds. Over three seconds. Ooh. Come on. Here. It may seem like the secret to hang time happens up there. But the real trick to hang time is right here. That's it. It's all right here. To help us take a look, we've got former Tar Heel and NBA All-Star Vince Carter. He spent plenty of time in the air. Vince, is there anything you can do to stay in the air longer? When my feet leave the ground, I become a projectile. So what does that mean? A projectile is something that we launch in flight that we can't control. So when I throw a basketball, the ball is a projectile. Right. And how long a projectile is in the air is determined by? Gravity. And one of the things we know for sure is that you can't defy gravity. What goes up? Must come down. If I do this, but if I do this, we apply a force to launch a projectile. That force has to be stronger than gravity. The instant we stop applying that force and the object's in the air, gravity's the only force, and it pulls the ball down. And gravity pulls down every projectile at the same rate, no matter how much it weighs. So whether it's this basketball or this bowling ball, they're both going to hit the ground at the same time. Ta-da! But some projectiles do stay in the air longer than others. How come? Something with a lot of upward velocity is going to stay in the air longer. OK. But the force of gravity is slowing down the upward velocity. And then what? Well, the ball stops going up, and gravity now brings it down. So what does all this tell us? That the upward velocity determines how high something goes. So what can this tell us about hang time in basketball? The higher something goes, the longer it will stay in the air. So how long you're in the air depends on how high you jump. OK, so that seems right. So like, if you can jump twice as high as he can, then you'll be in the air twice as long. Seems right. Well, we can't be sure until we try it out. Let's go. We know that videotape records at 30 frames a second. So by counting the number of frames, we can figure out how long they were in the air. Corey jumped a height of one foot and was in the air for 15 frames, or half a second. Larry jumped a pretty amazing two feet. If we count the number of frames, we get around 21 frames. That's only 0.71 of a second. So what happened? He jumped twice as high, but was only in the air around 20% longer. So jumping twice as high doesn't mean you get twice the hang time. The relation between height and hang time isn't linear. Jumping one foot in the air gives you a hang time of a half second. You'd have to jump four feet in the air to double that and be in the air for one second. OK, so we know that your vertical velocity is going to determine how high you go and how long you stay in the air. But when I dunk, we don't jump straight up. Can't we get more hang time by running into it and moving horizontally at the same time? Nope. No? Nope. You sure? Yes, it's me. Larry here jumped two feet. That's pretty high. His hang time was 0.71 of a second. Let's have him take a running start, see if he can get higher and hang in the air longer. Let's go to the videotape. We won't worry how high Larry goes, because we know that if he's in the air longer, he went higher. 
Larry was in the air for 19 frames, a fraction less than a standard jump. That's only 0.63 of a second. So Larry here actually got a little less hang time with a running start. Now, we know he had vertical velocity because he went up. But he also had horizontal velocity because he traveled down the court. So what does that tell us? That horizontal velocity doesn't keep you in the air longer. That the two velocities are independent. They don't affect each other. We know that a basketball player can't get any hang time out of a running start because in physics, we know that a projectile's horizontal and vertical velocities don't have anything to do with each other. It may seem strange, but it's true. If I throw this ball straight out from a height of four feet and I drop this ball from a height of four feet, they're both going to hit the ground at the same time. One ball landed further away horizontally than the other, but they both dropped vertically the same distance, so they had to hit at the same time. Gravity does not mess around. It pulled both balls down at the same rate. So the higher you go, the longer I stay in the air. Now that we know how it works, let's take it through the jump. Vince, how do you jump? Well, you just jump, bend your legs, and push up. What if I told you that what you're really doing is accelerating your center of gravity? I might believe you. An object's center of gravity, or center of mass, is that point where an object's mass balances out. For some shape objects, like this ruler, you can just balance it to find the center of gravity. You can also spin something to find the center of gravity, because it will always spin around that point. For something hollow like a basketball, the center of gravity is in the center of the ball, even though there's nothing there. When we launch a projectile, like jumping, we're accelerating an object's mass. So we use the center of gravity, or center of mass, to be the point where we measure that object's acceleration. Sort of gives us an average of an object's mass. The more vertical velocity Vince can generate, the higher he'll go and the longer he'll be in the air. The amount of acceleration has to do with two things. The first is how long the center of gravity accelerates. This is the length of time Vince is able to push up before his legs straighten and his feet leave the floor. The further down you bring your center of gravity, the greater the distance you have to accelerate it and the higher you jump. Of course, there is a limit to how low you can go. The second thing that determines how high you jump is the ratio of force to weight. This is the force you push down on the floor with divided by your weight. Obviously, the greatest amount of force with the least amount of weight will get you the highest. OK, so we've seen that once a basketball player is in the air, there's nothing they can do to increase hang time. But how come sometimes they do seem to hang in the air? It's an illusion. It was created in a couple different ways. What would you say if I told you he's usually in the air for less than one second? I'd say that's, that's pretty amazing, because it looks like he's up there an awful lot longer than that. Well, I would say that you're probably wrong. <laughs> it doesn't sound right. Somebody else has been fooled. See the curved path the ball follows? That's called a parabola. A parabola shows the shape of gravity slowing the vertical velocity and pulling it back down. A parabola can be shallow or steep, but it always follows a constant curve. It can't be flattened out. But there is a way basketball players make it seem like they're flattening this curve. When Vince leaps into the air like this, it seems he's floating horizontally rather than just going up and down. But if we trace the path of his center of gravity, we see that it really is just arcing up, then down. It has to. As Vince leaps, his vertical velocity is very fast. Then gravity slows it and gradually pulls him down. As he gets closer to the ground, he is again going very fast. What this means is Vince spends the majority of his time in the air up near the top of the arc. Actually, half of the time is spent at the top quarter of the arc. This naturally gives the illusion that he is floating horizontally. An object's center of gravity is where its mass balances out. Now, if we change the object's shape, its center of gravity changes. Now, the difference between a basketball and a basketball player is that the player can change shape in midair. It may not keep you in the air any longer, but changing your shape in midair can create the illusion that you're floating. 
Here's how it works. A lot of players lift their legs when they jump. By changing their shape like this, they can change the location of the center of gravity relative to their bodies. If Vince's center of gravity is down here below his navel, lifting his legs could raise it up onto his stomach. The center of gravity still follows the parabola, but the head and shoulders will actually move horizontally for an instant. To do this, the legs have to be raised exactly at the peak of the jump. Since our eyes tend to follow the head and shoulders of the player, it seems like they're floating, even though their center of gravity follows a perfect arc. Ballet dancers use this technique for the greatest effect of floating in their leaps. In fact, ballet dancers get some of the greatest air. It may not be defying gravity, but it sure is nice to look at. The final reason people tend to think of hoopsters as floating through the air is TV's use of slow-mo replay. We get used to seeing these players hang in the air forever. So, there's the amount of time a player naturally spends at the top of the leap, the ability of some players to change their shape in midair, and the usage of slow motion replays all making you think these players are defying gravity. But they're not. OK, OK, none of this talks about what it must feel like to soar through the air and dunk. You guys look like you have a lot of fun out there. Oh, we have a lot of fun. Dunking is an art, and we enjoy it. And mostly, it's to, to entertain the fans. OK, so what did we learn today? That a projectile is an object launched into the air that can't control its own flight. And a projectile's flight is determined by what happens before it leaves the ground. After that, gravity takes over, so your hang time is determined by your vertical velocity. And horizontal velocity has no effect on hang time. The center of gravity of an object makes a shape called a parabola because of gravity. And no matter what, you can't defy gravity. Well, that's it. We'd like to thank Vince Carter for donating his time today. And our students, Corey, Angela, Larry, Erica, Stephen, and Ashley, for helping us out today on ESPN Sports Figures Hang Time. OK, can I get down? No, down. Not down, please. Fella, hello. After a long, stressful day of teachers and tests and that pain in the butt little brother, try shaking it out. Dancing is a great way to relieve stress and get exercise too. You feel better when you exercise because your body releases chemicals called endorphins, and endorphins make you feel good. I can't dance like them, but that doesn't mean I don't like to dance. See, here's the great thing. No matter how dorky you feel on the dance floor, there's always somebody just a little bit dorkier. You can even do it all by yourself. Slide on some headphones and you are on your own personal dance floor. Close your eyes, get lost in the music, and forget your troubles. Of course, it's more fun with other people because you never know who you might meet. So call your friends and get a dance party going. Remember, it doesn't matter what you play. Play your way! We'd like to thank today's athletes for donating their time to help put your brain in the game. I'm Reese Davis, and we'll see you next time on Sports Figures. ESPN Sports Figures is presented commercial free for educators to tape and use in the classroom. For a free teacher's curriculum, to order the Sports Figures series, or if you have questions or comments, visit our website at ESPNSportsFigures.com. You can also call 1-800-565-0452. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Sports, sports Figures, put, put your, your brain, brain in the, in the game. game. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable companies.